Welcome to the Church of St. Matthew as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. We welcome all of you who have gathered here in church this afternoon, and we welcome all those who are watching from home or elsewhere on Sunday morning. This is the first weekend of the month. There will be a second collection following communion for Community of Saints, our parish school. To order a copy of Father Steve's homily book, please add your name to the list available at the back of church. This book is a transcription of Father's hom uh, Gospels and homilies over the past year. For those of you watching at home, be sure to call the parish office early this week to order your copy. You are invited to speak and sing responses at Mass. Please do continue social distance and keep your mask over your mouth and nose. Please join me now as we take 30 seconds in quiet to prepare ourselves for Mass today. Thank you and welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. We begin our prayer this evening by coming before the Lord God and acknowledging that we are sinners, that we seek his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of life for all who put their trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Father's eternal gift of love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died and rose from the dead to bring life to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. 
Almighty, ever-living God, you constantly accomplish the Easter mystery within us. You make us pleasing through, through the waters of baptism, and you place us under your protective care. May we bear much fruit and come to the joy of eternal life. We pray this through Jesus, your Son. He lives with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem, spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace, it was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John glory to you O Lord Jesus said to his disciples I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower he takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so it bears more fruit. You have already been pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit apart from the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. The one who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire. They will be burned. Yet if you remain in me and my word remains in you, you may ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. For it is in this way that the Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, that you become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. In many ways, St. John's Gospel is very simple. There really is only a one central message that is being given, and that message is that you and I are called into union with Jesus, and through that union we come to the Father. And throughout the Gospel of John, John records instances where, where Jesus gives examples of that. I am the true bread come down from heaven. 
if you eat this bread, you will live forever. And the bread I will give you is my flesh for the life of the world. I am the living water. Your ancestors drank at this at this watering hole, and they have died. The water that I will give you will bring you to the fullness of life. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my friend. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. I am the way. I am the truth. The light. All of those images, all of those, those pictures that are being drawn are really to, to draw us into understanding accepting and living one central truth, that we are called into union with Jesus. The fullness of our life is found in that union. But John is not, um, he's not cavalier about this. He says, in effect, this is not an easy thing to do. You know, it's much easier to follow a mess of rules that these 10 things or these 20 things or these 50 things are the things I do and I can check them off and then everything is fine. It's a very static way of looking at, at one's faith. John says it has nothing to do with rules, it has to do with the person. It has to do with the relationship with Jesus. That's more difficult. Because a relationship with a person is dynamic. It grows and it wanes and it changes direction and it allows for something new to emerge. We all know that that is true. Marriage and friendships and working groups that if there's a commitment to another person, if there's a commitment to a variety of people around the accomplishment of a goal, it takes a lot of work to keep that together. Jesus says that that's what he's asking of his disciples. They bond with him. That through that, they will come into union with the Father. There are all kinds of pieces of literature and art that, that describe this reality. You know, that a person doesn't let loose of that being held by Jesus. One person doesn't do that all at once. What happens is relationships drift apart. Slowly, that tie is loosened. Just as that relationship builds slowly, one step at a time, one experience at a time. One saying yes, and yes. The wonderful Italian movie, La Dolce Vita, in which that story is really being told. Marcello is the leading character. He's a journalist. He's the worst kind of journalist. He's a tabloid journalist. His job is to run around and to chase celebrities and to find them doing something wrong. Make sure that it gets photographed and then it gets put in the newspaper. He comes from a small town in northern Italy. And he comes out of a, of a very good family. The movie starts with a giant statue of Jesus that is being hauled across the skyline of Rome by a helicopter. The statue dangles over the tops of the roofs of the, of the city. 
And the next picture we get is the picture of Marcello. Marcello driving his automobile very fast, very, very furiously, with a big smile on his face and the wind blowing through his hair. The movie really talks about what happens in a week, what happens in seven days. And what happens is that his life of virtue begins to decline. He is so enamored and so taken in by the, all the opportunities that are around him, all the pleasures that are available to him, that bit by bit he, he is seduced day after day, living a very vapid life, a very empty life. The director is trying to tell us, though, is that all of this starts with the image of Jesus flying over the city, over Marcello. Even though that Marcello is drifting bit by bit, it doesn't mean that Jesus' love and care and call for him is drifting at all. It's just that he's finding it harder. final scene of that movie is he's on the, the seashore and a large fish has been washed up on the shore. This fish is dying. Can't get any nourishment and it's out of the water, it's out of its means of life, separated from what keeps him alive. And it's really the picture of what And it's the picture that Jesus is putting forth in today's gospel. I am the vine, you are the branches. To abide in me and I in you will have full life. We pray today, we come, come to enter into this sacrament of, of union with the Lord. That's really what happens in the Eucharist. We come to Together as a community. And individually, we are invited to deepen that relationship with the Lord through the sacrament. That in a very real and true and honest way, the Lord becomes present. You and I are invited to deepen that relationship. To listen to what we have to say. Listening is the the first rule of having a spiritual life. St. Benedict told his monks in the first, not only the first chapter, but the first sentence of, of the rule. They were to listen, but not with their ears. Listen with the ear of the Lord. Listen to the word of God. Listen to the revelation of Well, for us, all of this began in the waters of baptism. When you and I were linked, we were, we were brought into union with Christ. We were grafted onto that vine. And so it's important, I think, for us periodically to renew the, the creed of baptism and to renew our commitment to live attached to the vine, knowing that only attached to the vine can we have the fullness of life. Please stand. And so I ask you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and buried, raised to life on the third day, seated at the right hand of God? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. We turn now and we make our prayer to the Lord. For the church, may we continue to blossom on the true vine that is Jesus Christ, exercising true discipleship and bearing fruit in the world. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who live in countries or regions where they are persecuted or oppressed, who live in fear of bearing fruit, that justice and peace may bloom in the darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all living things that return to life in the spring, budding trees, flowering plants, fruitful vegetation, and spreading vines, may they blossom in their full glory as God created them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized this Easter season, may they form strong and fruitful branches on the true vine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the confirmation class of 2021, may they be filled with the Holy Spirit and live their lives as soldiers of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are lonely or isolated, may their connection to the true vine be sustained and strengthened, and may they know their value in God's eyes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are working to promote respect for life from conception to natural death, may their efforts be successful each and every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, especially Pat Pendleton, Cecilia Glenn, Anita Mahler, Aaron Jack, Jerry Genegas, and Jan Steinbrenner. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. Victory is ours, victory is ours, through him who loved us, victory is ours. Pray that our sacrifice be acceptable to God the Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of God's name. For our good and of all God's holy. O God, who by wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, you have made us partakers of your divine life. Grant that we, as, as we have come to know your truth, we may, we may make it ours by a worthy way of living. 
We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but especially during this glorious time when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Dying, he has destroyed our death, and rising, he has brought us to the fullness of life. So now with all the angels and saints, we do proclaim your glory as we sing. God, you are the Holy One, you are the source of all that is holy. Humbly we pray that you make our gifts holy. Send your Spirit upon them. Grant that by the power of your Spirit we may receive from this altar the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was betrayed and willingly entered into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks and praise, he blessed and he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body. It will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup and once again gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, take this all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all that sin be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. So we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, and we offer you the bread of life the cup of salvation. Thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. We humbly pray that all who share the gift of his body and his blood be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Gather her together in charity with Francis, with Bernard, our bishop, with the entire people your son has gained. Remember our sisters and brothers who have gone to their rest believing in the resurrection. Remember all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. You have mercy on us all. That with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages, may we praise you in union with them and give you glory your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety. Wait in joyful hope for the coming of the Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity according to your will. You live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am Lord. not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May be seated.
Let us pray. Lord God, our refuge in every danger, we turn to you in our distress. Look with compassion upon the afflicted. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give comfort to mourners. Grant healing to the sick. Give peace to the dying. Give strength to health care workers. And give us the courage to reach out to all in your love. Look with favor and protect each of us and our families. We pray this through Christ our Lord. I want to thank all of you who participated in the second collection for Community of Saints School. And for those who are viewing at home, if you would wish to make a gift, you may send that check to the church office. Tomorrow at 10.15, the Sacrament of Confirmation will be celebrated here as we gather almost 20 of our students who have been preparing for this sacrament throughout the year. So I would ask if you have a moment tonight or tomorrow to just remember those young people in your prayers. On Saturday, May 15th, and on Sunday, May 16th, is First Communion. And again, I would ask that if you have a moment of time to just Ask the Lord's blessing upon those young people and their families. Tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, the rosary procession, the May procession, begins with gathering at the Minnesota State Capitol. So if you wish to participate in that, it needs to be, you need to be there before 2 o'clock. You know, that, that event, the annual rosary procession, has have a powerful history with this parish that many of us remember Hugh and Monica O'Kane. Well, for almost 20 years, they were the chairpersons for that event. Put a lot of energy into drawing people together to give honor to Mary, the mother of the Lord, at the beginning of the season of, the beginning of the month. It was also chosen because the 1st of May, May Day is a, The day in which, in many secular countries, there is a celebration and an honoring of the human spirit and the human work and the human energy and give praise for all that humans are able to accomplish. While we accept all of that, acknowledge that it is under the grace of God that that happens that through the intercession of Mary, the mother of the Lord. 
that happen. But before we conclude, I would like to invite those who are going to bring Eucharist to members of their, their family or neighbors, people unable to be with us. Pray. Lord God, you are the giver of every good gift. You pour blessings upon us. You are present among us as we celebrate the Eucharist. We are mindful of those who are unable to be with us. And we pray that through the ministry of these, these Eucharistic ministers, the gift of the altar may be brought to them, and that they may be assured of our love and our care and our prayer. We pray this through Christ our Lord. I received a letter this week from a couple in Arlington, Virginia. When the pandemic really began back in March and April of last year, they were looking at finding a way to participate in the Eucharist via the um, chronic medium. And so they went online and they tried to find their cathedral, St. Matthew's Cathedral in Washington, D.C. Well, they didn't find it. What they found was St. Matthew's of St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> and for the past year, Sunday after Sunday, they've been worshiping with us. And they just dropped a note to say how glad they were that they were able to stumble upon this community. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.